JavaScript has come a long way since its creation in the 1900s. It's now much more than a front-end programming language. It was originally created to make web pages interactive and to add fancy animations, but it's now matured into an enterprise-grade back-end language with Node.js. In the last few years, some alternatives for using JavaScript on the back end have emerged. In addition to Node.js, we have runtimes like Dino and Bun. If you want to learn more about Dino, go check out this video. In this video, we're going to focus on Bun, a new generation runtime for running JavaScript or TypeScript on a server. Bun is a new runtime designed for speed. It is optimized for large scale web servers and includes modern tooling such as a built-in TypeScript interpreter, test runner, and package manager. It's fully compatible with Node.js, so the packages that you use in your other projects should work just fine with Bun as well. In this video, we'll introduce you to using Bun to write a simple CRUD API to read and write from a MongoDB collection. Now, we're just going to use the built-in packages from Bun to create a web server and the MongoDB Node.js driver to connect to the database. Now, if you'd like to learn by reading, check out the written version of this tutorial. There's a link in the video description. Now, if you don't already have Bun installed, go to the official Bun website, bun.sh, and you can find the installation instructions here for Linux and Mac and also Windows. Now, like with any typical Node.js project, we'll need to initialize our application. So let's start out by running bun init. You can enter anything that you'd like as a package name or just hit enter to use the folder's name. We'll accept the default entry point and we're done. And we can see here that it's added a readme, an index.ts, package.json, tsconfig, and our node modules. So if you're a Node.js developer, this should be very familiar. Now, the only other package that we need to install is MongoDB. So we're gonna do bun add MongoDB, and that's it. Now, the other thing that you'll need is a free forever Atlas cluster, along with our sample data set. If you need help getting that set up, go check out this video. Now, our application is going to be a simple API with five basic routes. These routes will allow us to create, read, update, and delete movies from our sample data set. We'll have a post route to slash movies, which will take a movie in the body and insert it into the collection. We'll have a get route at slash movies to retrieve the latest 10 movies that were added to the database. We'll have a get at slash movies slash ID, which returns a single movie by ID, a put at movies slash ID, which updates the movie specified in the path with the body, and then a delete route at slash movies slash ID, which deletes the movie specified in the path. And these routes will all be handled in the main index.ts file. And the logic to connect the database is going to be located in our utilities folder. And all the actions that will be performed on the database will be found in our controllers file. So let's get all of those set up. So let's open this up in VS Code. And let's start working on our index.ts file. We'll go ahead and delete uh, the console log that's already in here. And we're going to start out by building a simple basic web server. Bun has multiple built-in packages, including bun.serve. And this package contains all the necessary components to build a basic web server. So if we save this, let's open up our terminal. And if we run bun watch run index.ts, we should see that it's now listening on localhost port 3000. The watch flag tells bun to automatically reload the server whenever a file change happens. This is very convenient while you're in development mode. And the default port that bun uses is 3000. And you can change that by using a port environment variable if you want. Now we can try this out using Postman or a similar service, use your web browser or a CLI tool such as curl. And that's what I'm gonna use here. I'm gonna add another terminal here on the side and here, let's do curl localhost 3000. And we should get welcome to the movie database. Congratulations, you've just successfully built a web server with Bun. So now it's time to connect to a MongoDB database. So for that, let's go ahead and add a new folder and file. So we're gonna create a folder called utils and the file called db.ts. And this is where we're going to connect to the MongoDB database. This is where that's going to be handled. And we're going to use the MongoDB driver, which we have already installed in our project. And we're going to use that to connect to our movies collection, which is part of our sample data set. And then we'll export that collection for your controllers to use. Now in a production environment, you'd also want to have some logic to ensure that your database connection is working properly. But for the purposes of this simple tutorial, we're gonna to stick to the basics. So we have our Mongo client, which we're importing. And then notice we have a MongoDB underscore URI. That is our connection string that we'll need to provide in our environment variables. If we don't have a connection string, we're going to throw an error. And then otherwise we are going to set up our client. 
So again, we're using TypeScript. So this is of type Mongo client. We're going to await Mongo client and then connect using our connection string. And then we're going to get our movies collection. So we're going to define that by client DB equals sample inflix. That is the name of our movies database. And then the collection within that database is called movies. And then we're just going to export that movies collection. So let's save that and we'll need to set up our environment variable file. So let's go over here. We'll create a new file called .env. And this is where you'll want to put your connection string, mongodb underscore URI, and then your connection string goes here. Go ahead and save that. Now with bun, there's no need to install an extra package to read environment variables like you have to do in Node.js. It's built in and it automatically knows to look at the .env file for any environment variables. So now we can connect to our database, uh, but this code isn't invoked anywhere yet. So there's not much that we can do to test this. So let's go ahead and continue building. So far we have our index.ts file, our database connection file. Next, let's build out our movie model. So Bun uses TypeScript out of the box. You can also decide to use plain JavaScript if you want, but let's go ahead and leverage the power of TypeScript in this application. So because we're using TypeScript, we need to create a movie model to tell our application what a movie looks like. So let's go ahead and create a new folder and file. We'll create a folder called models and then a movies.ts file. So we're going to keep it simple here. Our movies will only have a title, some actors, and the year in which they were released. And of course, our underscore ID field. All right, now that we have our model set up, let's save that. And let's also create our controller for our movies. So let's create a new folder and file. We're going to create a folder called controllers and then a movies.ts file. So this is going to contain all of our CRUD operations for our database. So this controller is going to communicate with our database and return the results from all of the operations that we perform on the server. So we're getting our movies collection from our utils database file, and we're importing our movie model and then setting up our movie controller class. So we have several public functions here, add movie, get movies, get movie by ID, update movie and delete movie. And then at the end, exporting our movie controller. So in our add movie, we are using the movies collection and then inserting one movie. Get movies is going to find all movies, sort them descending by the ID, limit to the latest 10, and then return that as an array. Get movie by ID is going to just use find one and then find a movie by its ID. Update movie uses update one to update a movie by its ID and then set it to the movie that is uh, sent into this function. And then delete movie uses delete one to delete a movie by its ID. So now it's time to tie everything together. We're going to go back to our index.ts file and we'll make some updates here. Here we're going to import the necessary components, perform some routing and call the appropriate methods from our controller. So first at the top, let's go ahead and import what we need here, we're gonna need our object ID from MongoDB, our movie controller from our controllers and our movie model. Okay, so we're going to add to this for our 404, we are going to add in our routes here. So we are going to implement a full routing system here because uh, we want to keep this basic. Uh, we're not going to use a framework, but in production, you may want to use a framework such as Hano or Express. But in this case, we're going to use regular expressions to match any route that starts with slash movies. And then we'll look at the method used. So if we've matched the slash movies route and the method is post, uh, then we'll do this. If the method is get, we'll do this, put this, delete this. And if none of those match, then we return a 404. So we can test that right now. Let's go ahead and save this. And then in our terminal, we could do curl localhost 3000 slash movies. And we should get not implemented yet because that is what we are returning here. If we do the same thing and then specify that we want to post, uh, we should get not implemented yet. And if we try put, we should get the same thing and delete and patch. We should get a 404 on patch because we did not implement a patch method. And of course, if we try to go to uh, anywhere that is not movies, let's say we do articles, uh, we should get 404 as well because that's not a route that we have implemented. Okay, so let's go ahead and update each one of these methods. So let's start with our post method. We're going to enable the ability to add a new movie to our database. 
So to add a movie to the database, we have to read the body of the request using request.json. So we're going to get that movie from our request, and then we're going to pass that into our movies controller and call the add movie method and pass it our movie. So let's save that and let's test it out. Go back into our terminal and let's go ahead and do a post and we're going to give it some data and the data is going to be title and the value will be new movie. So we're sending a post command to our movies route and then giving it the data of title new movie. Let's run that and we should get acknowledged true and we have our inserted new ID uh, that is returned to us. So let's copy this ID for future reference. And then let's go ahead and work on our read route. This route is going to be slightly more complex uh, because it's going to handle both reading uh, the top 10 or the, the latest 10 movies and reading just a single movie by its ID. So to figure out which one of these routes uh, to use, we're going to look for the existence of a parameter after slash movies. So we're going to read params from URL uh, path name and dot split and then dot split at the slash. So if there is something after slash movies slash ID, something like that, we're going to split that. So if we have a second parameter, that means we do have an ID, then we're going to get that movies ID from that parameter. And then we are going to call the get movies by ID method from our movies controller, passing in that movie ID. If we don't have that, then we're going to call get movies, which is going to get the latest 10 movies from the database. So let's save that and test those out. Let's just do curl localhost 3000 slash movies, and this should return the latest 10 movies. Of course, this is not pretty printed, so it looks just like a, a wall of uh, JSON data but we have the latest 10 there. If you do want to pretty print it, you can use the JQ tool. On Mac, you can do brew install JQ, and then we can do curl localhost 3000 slash movies, and then pipe JQ. And that will give us a nice uh, pretty print of all of that JavaScript that was returned to us, the last latest 10 movies from our database. Okay, let's test out the other method. So this time, we're going to include after movies an object ID. We're going to include that object ID of that new document that we added in our last test. All right, so I'm going to paste in that object ID, and then let's run this. And we can see that we have the ID and the title, but we don't have anything else, and that is because all we added was the title. But if we go back up and we find one of these other object IDs, such as this one, go back down, let's paste this other object ID in here and run that and we'll get all of the information from this entry. All right, so those routes are working. Let's move on to our update route. All right, moving on to the update that is going to be in our put method. So here we're going to get our uh, movie ID just like we did uh, earlier. We uh, know that we're going to have a object ID a parameter there, an extra parameter. So we're going to get that movie ID from our URL uh, path name and split that. And then we are going to get our movie from our request body. Then we'll call our update movie method, passing in our movie ID and the updated movie uh, JSON information that is passed into our uh, request body. All right, let's save that and let's test that out. So back in here, we can uh, let's go back and let's do uh, movies. And we're going to use that initial uh, movie that we added to the database. And let's update the title. So remember, this is a put request. So we're going to specify put. And then we're going to pass some data. And in the data, we're passing this JSON object called title. And so we're going to update that title. Uh, it was initially new movie. So let's say new movie updated. All right. So Acknowledge true, modified one, and let's go ahead and check that. So if we go back and we do uh, slash movies and then that object ID, we should see new movie updated. Nice. So that works. Let's work on our delete route. All right. So the delete route is going to be very similar. Let's go down here. And again, we're going to get our movie ID from our URL path name. And then we'll call the delete movie method on our movie controller and pass it in that movie ID. Let's save that. And this will be pretty simple to test. 
we are going to, this time, instead of put, we'll use delete, the delete method, and we're going to um, pass in the ID of that document that we've been uh, using, the one that we have uh, added to our database. So acknowledge true. And so now if we go back and we try to read this specific ID, we should get null. So that ID is no longer there, it's been deleted. And if we run this again without the JQ, you'll see that it just returns null. So what's next? Well, you have a fully functional server running on Bun that can connect to your MongoDB collection, perform basic CRUD operations. And you can find the complete code for this in a GitHub repo. It is linked in the written version of this tutorial. There's a link in the video description. Now, before deploying this code into production, you would want to add more robustness to your code. You'd want to uh, handle errors, make sure that you return appropriate error codes when a document is not found, etc. Uh, but this is a good starting point for your first application. If you have any questions or issues, check out the MongoDB community forums. Ask your questions there. There's a link again in the video description. If this video was helpful, give it a like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.